Yeah, I mean, the idea of the American character, perhaps I have used that phrase, I don't know, obviously is, is some kind of insane simplification of something that's incredibly complex, you know. It always worries me when there is the word the that prefaces any phrase. The American character suggests that there's one and only one American character. It's just a way of saying that, you know, whatever the differences of our experience as Americans or whatever, there's also some kind of commonality. One aspect of the American tradition in philosophy is the attempt to reconcile the practical feet on the ground, American salt of the earth idea with, with abstract thought. You couldn't make any sense of America without understanding philosophy. Very frequently, the most significant progressive moments in American life is the coming together of a certain kind of practicality and idealism. There's a tendency among Americans to want to solve problems. Pragmatism? Pragmatism. I don't think that pragmatism would ever have existed without the USA. I just don't think it could have developed on the soil of European philosophy at that time. I think our practicality had so much to do with the need to subdue a continent. That sense of a direct approach of, of you know, here's the deal, let's face up to what the facts are, find out what the alternatives are, let's make some decisions, let's solve the bad thing. That's very American. But I think there was a, see, a certain urgency about American experience that required you to, to shape what you know and what you think to be relevant to the situation. What's so distinctive about the founding fathers is they're not ignorant. They know they're Locke, they know they're Hume, they know they're Rousseau, and they're also very practical. Franklin and Jefferson, of course, drew heavily on, on European thought. Uh, what they did is to bring their ideas to bear on, on their cultural activities. Our counterparts in the Enlightenment were not doing that in their countries. My history of pragmatism would be uh, start off with Ben Franklin. But Franklin in the autobiography, for example, I mean, why did he write that book? What Franklin did was um, actions, and these actions led to a certain kind of persona or social persona that grew in America because he created this country or helped create this country of practical-minded people. But what he wanted to do by writing the autobiography was to spur moral effort. He wanted people to imitate him. So to me, you're kind of back to a kind of truth which is not simply stated, but to be acted upon. And you could certainly carry that forward, not only to the transcendentalist, but into pragmatism. If one asks, what is American philosophy? Philosophy that corresponds to the American experience. But what is the American experience? It's a dark and troubled side to the, the, the story of the American experience. The American experience was a fairly broad notion uh, of experience set against uh, the British and also against Native Americans. So which ranges from, of course, the genocide of Native peoples and the slave trade to the Civil War. It's made us both a, a very naive and a very tragic people. It's not the Anglo or European American experience. It just includes that. Interaction was quite common between um, leading intellectual figures and Native people in the uh, the 17th and 18th centuries, it was common. I had most leading intellectuals had had conversations with Native people, lots of conversations with them, because it was a border situation across the whole of what became the United States. Jefferson was someone who routinely talked with Native people who were at and around the place where he lived. It includes the Native American experience. It includes the African American experience. And all of these things come together to form the context of insight and intuition and, and experience that gives rise to the philosophy. Ralph Waldo Emerson, who is sort of the quintessential um, American philosopher as far as the world is concerned. You couldn't have Ralph Waldo Emerson without the combined influence of all of those different traditions. When I read, for example, the preamble to the Declaration of Independence, we find these truths to be self-evident. They're not just self-evident in the sense that they're true, they're self-evident in the sense that they're impelling the revolutionaries to do something incredible. Had they lost the revolution, all of those people would have been strung up and, uh, you know, executed summarily. They feel almost like a moral imperative to make these truths of 
um, all men are created to be equal and so forth and so on, you know, to make them real in the world. There is something in pragmatism, in American personalism, American idealism, and even in process philosophy that expresses the American experience. The thing that I would say characterizes that most adequately has to do with a certain not only practicality but a certain assumption about the inseparability of the way a person lives and the way a person thinks. Philosophy is really the only practical uh, subject matter, that it's really the only practical field of study. It's the only one that attends to questions about choice and action about what, what should be done. That's one of the features of philosophy is that we're asking questions about how we should live our lives. And so it only makes sense that you should try to embody the answer to those questions in the way you live your life. I think the way I've tried to answer some, of, some philosophical questions has changed the way I live. Or the way I live has changed my answers to philosophical questions.